Hi guys, Tim from the Heresy Group. So you guys are gonna know that we are huge fans of the guys over at Claw Gear here. Myself and Richie have run many different brands. More Richie, uh, who was a big convert over to Claw Gear equipment a few years back and has been running Claw Gears for the past couple of years. Now, myself, I started talking to the guys over at Claw Gear in about 2016 and have run Raiders since then. And then not long after getting those Raiders, I was sent these. These are the Operator Pan Mark I. Um, and here we've got the Operator Pan Mark II, which was released just a few weeks ago. So I wanna talk through the comparison between the two, the improvements. Now, obviously these are in different camo patterns, but the cut, the detail and everything, uh, you will see the differences between the two. It's standard across the trousers, so it doesn't change um, dependent upon pattern. Hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see this through today um, and be able to see some of the differences between the two. And where I think that the operator, the new operator pants, take a big stance, and I will also be talking in reference to the Raider Mark IVs as well. So I will do a direct comparison between the new um, Operator Mark IIs and the Raider Mark IVs. Um, that will be a separate video, but I just wanted to talk about the improvements, and there have been some significant improvements from the Mark I over to the Mark II and some real big design changes. So again, you can pick these up in a variety of different patterns. The Operator Mark II comes in a variety of different colors, more casual colors, more workwear colors too, um, in the tan and also in the gray, the mass gray, uh, the available in black and, and tons of other camos. If you wanna check that out, I'll make sure it's all in the link below. So starting off then, there's a few key things about the operators um, that previously I thought were a really nice touch, but they've definitely, definitely been improved upon. One of them is this button system at the top. You've got these two poppers um, at the top, which are nice and comfortable. It means that you haven't got any hard uh, button there um, that could potentially dig into you. But I did find that in certain positions and cutting certain movements that these poppers would come undone. Nice big belt loops here with the belt tabs at the top and you have them consistent across both trousers, uh, both here and at the back. And then you've got on here this kind of nylon ripstop material. Now, this is talking about these trousers in really granular, granular detail. But what I did find is that this is actually quite abrasive. So if you're trying to, if you're laid back, for example, you're, you're laid on your back and you're trying to get your hand into that top pocket, you'd actually find that your hand would catch on this and these loops too. So the fact that they've got these loops where they sit slightly forward, as you can see, they sit forward off the trouser, on the new uh, operators, they actually sit much lower and they sit flatter, so it's easier to get your hands in and out of these top pockets. You haven't got that abrasive material at the top. Looking inside the waistband at the top, you've got this slightly padded, like a cotton material around the waistband, and that is for comfort. Now, the issue with that type of material, that soft cotton, almost like a cotton t-shirt, is that if it got wet, it would take much more time to dry out here than it would on the rest of the trouser. So I have had it before where I've got a jacket on or I'm wearing a t-shirt and it's like raining or I've been sweating, that lower part of your back has got wet. This has actually dried out over a much longer period of time than the rest of the trouser. So I'm glad that they've actually done away from that. Now there is some slight padding in the top there, but nowhere near um, the same amount of kind of padding that you get around the top of the back of these trousers. And the cut feels almost slightly higher in the middle that you can see that sort of bevel in the middle towards the top that I do like. It means it sits slightly higher on your lower back. If you've got a t-shirt tucked in or if you're wearing a BDU or any form of military top and you have it tucked into the top of the trousers, just retains it in a little bit longer and I do like that. Coming around the belt line then, we have your traditional sort of two inch loops and we have that on both. The positioning of this loop obviously sits further in and on this trouser, it's actually further uh, to the left hand edge. So they brought it away. And the reason they brought it away is because this has this Velcro and I really like this shortened Velcro and then you have the big claw gear button on here, which again, after having the poppers, I'm a huge fan of this. Then you've got the fly system, which is similar on both trousers. Here you've got your uh, soft side of the uh, zip exposed, and then same, you've got the soft side of the zip exposed here, so it faces in against the fly. Really nice coverage area on the inside of the fly. Um, any of you boys that uh, have spent a long time out in the wet 
uh, with uh, wet that's soaked all the way through to your pants. Last thing you want is uh, any sort of rub or any abrasion from, from your zipper. Won't go any further than that. Uh, coming down the front of the trousers then, and then we'll spin around to the back. You've got your you know, pocket from the uh, front on the inside, and it goes all the way down again, uh, much like the pockets on here. Now on these trousers, you can see at the top here, you have the toggle adjustment uh, that will bring the knee uh, up and down. Now, you do have the same adjustment on uh, the Mark II, except it is retained in the back and it comes up to here, um, but the actual uh, elasticated cord is much less exposed. So it sits essentially there, that's where that toggle is. It's very much tucked in at the top of the pocket, so it's much harder to get to. Then on these ones, it sits a little bit over to the left. So a slight design change there, just to tuck that uh, bungee cord into the pockets a little bit more, and that's probably for you know ease of getting your hands in and out. So very slight improvements, but you can definitely see why they've been made. Coming down the front of the trousers then, you can see these are worn. Now these trousers have been worn for many, many events uh, in all different environments. I've got a slight tear in the crutch there that's been repaired. Um, and then coming down to this main kind of thigh pocket, when I flip the top open, we've got one big open pocket. Um, and that's it for that pocket. There's no internal storage on either side. Same on the left and the right pocket. The nice thing about these is they have this kind of neoprene pocket on the inside, so it separates this much larger compartment into two separate areas. It's really nice to put your phone and other bits and bobs in, um, stuff just to separate from the wider part of the pocket. So actually, I was wearing these um, at a recent weekend event, and I put in there my keys, my wallet, and all the other stuff, and then everything for the event I put in the larger pocket itself. So I could feel down in the pocket to make sure it was all there, but I had stuff in the lower section and there's stuff up in the higher section. And again, that's the same on both sides. So you've got your neoprene inner there as well. Again, nice stretchy material with the vent ports at the bottom. If you do get anything in there, anything spills, it's not gonna retain in the pocket. It will come out of those little vented ports there and you don't have them uh, on the original Raiders. So it's nice that they've put them little ports in at the bottom just to allow the pocket to breathe. Coming down to the knees then, uh, much like the improvement on the new Raiders, you've got this kind of really hard wearing, almost denim-like material down on the front of the knee pad. Now I have got the D30s on these and I have got some D30s coming for these. There is a bit of a delay with them at the moment, but I have got some knee pads coming for these. Um, but the nice thing is, is this is the standard material on the rest of the trouser sat at the front, whereas on this trouser you've got this much harder wearing material. Now I was in the quarry taking a knee, I've done some training days in these and I wore these at the recent night game that I went to. And again, very minimum wear heading down towards the bottom of the trouser. As we get towards the bottom then, there is some quite significant differences between the two. Now, this has a bungee bottom uh, on the originals that allow you to tighten the bottom up, and they have these, these little metal lace hooks. I love these things. It keeps the trouser down at the boots. Uh, it can stop the, the trousers from riding up, which is annoying on all levels of trouser. Um, with those, what I've also found is, you know, you have to kind of get the bottom of the trouser and pull it down over your boot, then latch the laces on. If you're trying to then get to, I don't know, laces, if you're trying, you've got gravel in the top of your boot and you're trying to get them off, it could just be a bit of a pain that you have to unlock that and then almost roll them up to get them back off of your foot. What you have with the new operators is a zipper up the side. I really, really like this feature. I, I must admit, it seems like such a silly thing, but it's a really nice feature. It allows you to, obviously, you know, pull your foot off, you've got loads of boot, you know, if you've got a, a trainer on or something like that, um, you can pull it, your leg completely out. At the same time, you want to put this over a boot, you want to get to your laces, you don't actually have to physically roll the trouser up. You can open that zipper up, you can get to your laces, you can sort your laces out, clear any rubbish from around the top of the boot, you know, reorg your boots, anything you need to do, you can do that. Then simply zip that down, and these have the same feature tucked in here, is that little metal clip for your laces. Again, I really like that. And then internally, unlike having the external Velcro like you have here, you've got your um, elasticated bungee for you to be able to tighten up that circumference uh, of the boot if you choose to. Now again, mine is okay, it's set, uh, happy, I'm happy with where it's set, but it is a really nice feature at the bottom. 
Also, the material around the base is really stitched super, super well. So I'm just gonna turn these inside out. Again, I haven't done any neating in of any threads or anything like that, but just coming down to the way that this is stitched, again, you've got that dual line stitch there, uh, and then you've got um, you know, your reinforced stitching. If you look at the difference in the spacing between the two, the actual stitch count here is much, much higher, and I'll put a picture in now. Um, they've really taken into, um, you know every granularity of level of ingrading the uh, upgrading the quality of their trouser uh, and even down to the amount of stitch count that they have so that's really cool what i'm now going to do is spin these trousers round so that we can go down the back side of the trouser so a lot of changes to the front the structure the internal and some really small tweak into placement as you look down the rear now is where you see the really significant changes for this pant Across the rear and around the crutch area, around the inside of the legs, you just have the standard material. Now they have taken into consideration a nice cut around the pant, uh, around the crutch area as well, and you have this added kind of V shape of material within the crutch area of the trousers, uh, and that allows for some more flexibility. But it is the standard um, material throughout. Now also you have this kind of reinforced knife pocket, or pocket knife, um, or your multi-tool pocket, what they've done is move that away from the bum and around further onto the hips. So you can see here, it's still got the reinforced pocket, but it sits much further around. Much like the cut of the rear pocket of the trouser, you can see it further around onto the hips. So it's bringing anything away from the bum around onto the kind of sides of your legs and down to the front, which again, I really like. If you've got anything in this back pocket, you've got anything in here and you roll onto that, that bum cheek or, or onto the back of that leg, you know, whatever is in there is gonna dig in. I've also changed the tab system at the top. So here you've just got these kind of nylon little stitch tabs. Here you actually have this sort of side of Velcro. These are rubberized um, and they feel much nicer quality. You also have these retainment hooks on the back. Now, whether you are using a belt-based system or whether you are using something that would require a retainment hook, um, whether that's a lanyard, whether you're doing work out of a helicopter or you're working at heights, um, that is perfect for being able to put your retention hook on just while you're cutting around. Again, really nice level of detail there. And again, you've got that reinforced, much larger two inch uh, rear area retainment for the belt. Now, on these ones, you've just got the material stitched. On here, you've got that nylon edging. Again, not a massive detail here coming around to the back, but it's just nice that they've eradicated that material throughout the entire trouser. I would imagine that would be for weight and also to keep that water signature down. Now, one of the key elements here that stayed the same is this rear pocket hidden away uh, by the zipper, which again, I really like. I don't tend to put a lot of stuff in my back pockets over my bum, just in case you are going into vehicles, you're, you're cutting about, you're leaning in, anything that's in there, I'm just worried about you know, potentially tearing the trouser if you're sliding down gravel, if you're hopping over walls, catching anything in the rear pockets could be a bit of a pain. But as you can see, these are much flatter. So these angle up on the back, sort of almost up at an angle towards the rear uh, belt attainment area. These are much, much flatter, and I do like that. When you're zipping the zipper, you kind of want to almost pull it directionally across rather than pulling that zipper up at an angle, and that's what you do with these. So I do like the fact that, one, these are much, much larger pockets for you to be able to get your hand all the way into. If I just open this one, you can see you've got a much smaller area for access. Here, you've got a much larger uh, um, pocket opening uh, and it's nice and flat. So it's very, very easy to get to those zippers. The material on the back is not lined. So it isn't got this material with more material underneath. It's just this material on the back of the trouser. This is a stretchy shark skin like neoprene. Now, obviously I haven't worn these enough to death to see how this wears, but what I've found is this gives you really, really good breathability and also flexibility. You know, this is a trouser that I'm not worried about ripping the crutch out of like I've done on these where I've taken a knee or I'm cutting an angle where I've got a really low lunge and I'm using that position to sort of stabilize my body either against a building or against some, con you know, um, some concrete or some trees. And I'm, I'm kind of in a bit of a janky position. Um, obviously I've torn these. Now, taking a knee, cutting through some containers, cutting through some low angles, climbing through some little rat holes the other weekend, 
not a problem there. Lots of stretch, lots of flexibility. And again, that area doesn't just go across the bum, it goes down and actually down at the inside of the legs. And I will talk about this in a second to a completely reinforced area around the knee. So these trousers are incredibly flexible. If you are someone who's running and going, if someone that's moving a lot, or even if you're in a profession where you need to be on your hands and knees a lot, if you're a medic, if you're an EMT, if you're LEO, any of those types of professions where you actually spend a lot of time with contacts or with people down on the ground, these are really good for that. And, and you, know, you definitely feel that extra level of flexibility when you've got them on. So coming down the back then, you've got you know, no adjustment in regards of the rear for the knee and for the adjustment across the knee pad, and that's what you do get on the Raiders. Um, for me, I think that's really nice. It keeps the actual knee area you know, redundant of any bulk. Um, and so coming down the back, essentially you've got a nice clear trouser uh, all the way down to the bottom. Now with the Raiders, you've got pockets on the ankles. On these, you don't, and actually really, again, I like that fact. Um, coming all the way down to the bottom, you've got a reinforced area on the inside here. So if you've got a boot uh, and you've got these trousers scuffing together, whether you are working, marching, whatever, however you're doing your foot placement, I do like that the inside of this is reinforced. So there's a lot of differences between these two trousers, lots of improvements. I really like the new material. I like the new placement of the rear pockets. Um, you know, I like the retention hooks on the back. They really have moved this product forward. And that's one of the really great things about what Claw Gear are doing. They are continually improving. They're Raider 4s, they've been improved over the years. Again, I will put that Raider Mark IV up against the Operator V2, just in case you're sort of considering the two trousers and you're not sure which one to pick. But the improvements over the Operator Mark I to the Operator Mark II are very, very good and very significant. You can see that they're really driving the ergonomics of the trousers, the fit and the comfort of the end user. So I know this has been quite granular. I know there's been a few people asking about what I would do in regards of comparing the two trouser. I think this was an awesome trouser. Uh, again, I've been running this for about four years. I've run it in all different environments. I really like the camo pattern and the cut, but I do think that the new operator is a significant improvement. Again, not just for comfort, but for usage and ergonomics as well. So if you wanna check out any of the kit from Claw Gear, I'll make sure that the Claw Gear website is listed below. They're always releasing new stuff. I've got a lot of their jackets and a lot of their fleeces. I've run them all out in all different types of webbers. And I've got to say, they are very, very performance driven um, in the way that they develop their products. They really want the end user comfort um, to be as significant to them as possible in the way that they design their products. So go and check them out. They're the Operator Mark IIs. If you do have any questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, please leave it in the comments box below. I know this has been a bit of a dry video for you and if you guys don't want to nerd out on the new trousers, but I'm really impressed with them and I think that to show the differences between the two is really worth it. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for Claw Gear for all of the support on the channel. We know we absolutely love you guys and I will catch up with you all soon. Thanks guys. Bye.